There you are, just in time for your Libra July 2020 reading. Hello to the Libra subscribers. I've just been doing some meditation for you. And so you'll find during the course of this reading, comfort, release of anxiety, and a sense of peace will come with you because they are the energies that have been invoked to come to the aid of you, the Libra subscriber. Now, while I was doing that, there was a thunderstorm brewing outside my house, and that generally brings the rain with it not far behind. I like doing readings while it's raining. Actually, I've done some readings, personal readings, for some of you Libras, haven't I, in the last um, in the last month? And thank you very much for also for recommending me to your friends. I do appreciate that vote of confidence. If you'd like to have a personal reading, then just check out the information that's in the description box below. Now, when I do these tarot readings, I use a lot of astrology because the astrology uh, that I use is quite different. It's an esoteric form of astrology, which has underpinning it a lot of spiritual energy. And that spiritual energy also comes to bear, particularly on the fate of what is in store for you. There is the Four of Wands. Now there's also Chinese I Ching in this deck and there's one of them there, which I will explain because they can also have something to do with what goes on and will be happening for you. This is coming out. There's the Daughter of Swords in the South, Isis. Isis, of course, was the wife of Osiris and the mother of Horus in ancient Egyptology the great mother figure, the love goddess. And it was she who brought Osiris back to life. He resurrected after a period of death. Now there's also Nordic runes. This is the tower. There's Nordic runes and ancient biblical Hebrew letters. And they have something to bear on the energies as well. And I shall discuss them. That tower is in a central position for you. So I think there's some change. You want to come out, do you not? What's this one? The father of cups in the north. Now speaking of Norse runes, and it's the, looks like the elder Futhark alphabet. Well, Odin is the father of cups in the north. And of course, Odin was the king of the gods of the Norse. A very interesting story around Odin, which I'll probably get to in just a second when I look at this card. Oh, and here is the Eight of Stones, Knowledge, and there's another Chinese I Ching. So Libra, let's, um, let's relax and have a look to see what these have to say for you for this month of July. All right, can you see? Now, of course, we're not using the playing cards. We're only using the tarot, and I will. Look at this first card here, which also has a Chinese I Ching in it. Let's have a closer look, shall we? And you can see... Uh, what's happening in the image here? Well, first of all, there's a hand. You can see the fingers of the hand there offering a bubble in the middle of which is an eye. See that? There's the eye that's there. Um, the bubble, I think, indicates new possibilities for you. The spears pointing up and down are perfectly balanced energies. Now, I thought I might go straight away to this I Ching character that's here. And when we look at the I Ching, they, this is a hexagram, which means there's six lines. The unbroken lines are masculine, the broken lines are feminine. Now, you can either read them singly, in couplets, in triplets, or all together. Now, I'm going to read them all together for you. And this I Ching character here really means I think um, the, the period after completion of something, because do you know, it is a fine irony that after the completion of a project or a grand enterprise, there is really still much to do, isn't there? I think completion is merely a pause in the cycle of creation and decay, a momentary still point for the swinging pendulum of life though completion implies a period of restful pause, and one that is usually well earned, I think, by you, it is, it is not an actual ending, is what I'm getting here. 
It is a harmonious flat spot in the constancy of change and movement, like the still point which is between the breathing out and breathing in. I think even as you enjoy a rewarding situation, the laws of the natural world dictate that influence and success must eventually decline. So don't let your current good fortune give rise to adopting an attitude that is too careless or relaxed, because whatever successful law already established needs to be carefully maintained without trying to expand it right now. What is incomplete, on the other hand, should be brought to fruition without delay. Then take satisfaction upon completion and enjoy a sense of fulfillment. But don't linger too long on endings. Now, if I'm looking at the astrology of this card, for me, it is Venus ruling the third decan of Aries. You know, that 10th to the 19th of April. Now, Venus, I'm putting here in Libra, really. I'm seeing the association with Venus and you at the moment. And of course, Venus uh, is your planet. And in order for Venus to go from you over into Aries, it needs to travel 180 degrees away from your sign, so it will be in detriment. But it does bring some harmony, though. Now, Aries, of course, is, is ruled by Mars, and I think that Venus comes in and does bring some harmony to the aggressive Mars. Venus flutters her eyelids and exercises her feminine charms to tame the often aggressive and one-pointed nature of Mars. And there may even be some sort of an opposites attract action going on. And I think that you can have an emotional idea, that is Venus, to get moving in new directions for something. Or well, there may well be a part of you that wants to move in one direction, while another part of you wants to stay where you are, or to move into a different direction altogether. It's an extremely interesting uh, energy, this one. I think it can also mean that something needs to be completed. And I'm thinking of this I Ching here, of course. It needs to be finished off despite a desire to move on to new things. Now, this can relate to work or to new relationships or a new dynamic within an existing relationship. And as I say, it can also relate to a part of yourself where you want to go somewhere, but another part of you wants to go somewhere else. So I think you need to ask yourself, are you prepared to accept your partner as he or she is in spite of your differences? And what areas are in urgent need of clarification or resolution? Something beautiful is going to make its way into a relationship. You may notice it at first as established conditions are called into question and discussed openly. Clarifying the old is a prerequisite for a new oneness, a new beginning. And I'd have this thought in mind that completing the old frees me for the new. I think I might turn next to the card which sits underneath it. Now here's one of those um, Scandinavian runes or Viking runes, and there's a biblical Hebrew letter. And in this Scandinavian context, let's have a look here at this Father of Cups. Now, this is here, the figure of Odin. Odin was the king of the Norse gods, and you'll notice here he's missing an eye. He's missing an eye because Odin always sought wisdom. And he came across a very wise man or spirit, a sort of a witch or a, or a, uh, a shaman, who said to Odin, look, if you want me to give you wisdom, then you need to give up something of value in exchange. And so Odin took out one of his eyes, he blinded himself, and handed it over for wisdom. But it was the knowledge of the runes that he sought. And he's hanging upside down from this world tree, the upper branches of which housed the gods. 
of Norse mythology. And for nine days and nine nights without eating or drinking anything, he hung upside down and stared into the, well, I'll take this to be the well of Erd, which was a sacred well. Now in this well lived three old women known as the Norns. And the Norns wove the fates of humans and of the gods themselves, interestingly. And at the end of the nine days and nine nights, the runes came to the surface. And Odin then had knowledge, not only of the runes, but of their mystical meanings. Now the runes, of course, were the alphabet of the Vikings, from what we can tell. And um, this, um, these runes are known as the Elder Futhark. But looking at this guy here, here is a person, a man. Now these can also relate to the opposite gender in court cards, but I'll speak to him as if he's a man for the obvious reason. I have to say I'm getting a lot of Pisces and Aquarius around this card for you. So there may well be Pisces and Aquarius of interest to you during this period. This is a man with commitment issues, someone who is amiable but passive, attracted to excitement, someone who has an unsustainable enthusiasm for people or projects at times. He's actually, I think, quite sensitive, but deep down he's very shallow. His shadow side is that he can be sensual but lazy. He can be untruthful. He can be prone to depression and drug abuse or the abuse of of alcohol. He's mostly passive with the qualities of a Venus or a weak Jupiter. He is amiable, as I say, in a passive sort of a way, and he is on the whole so superficial that it's hard to reach his depth. His name is written in water. Well, I call him the Lord of Waves and Waters, the King of the Hosts of the Sea. He tends to mismanage his affairs, and with luck his career can be an unbroken record of failure. And often his mental civil wars lead to substance abuse. And it could also be within him, I think, the, um, the hint at the moment in this position and in this spread of, of a sort of a mental illness, like a mood disorder, like a bipolar or depression or an ADD type of thing, which can be self-medicated with alcohol and drugs. But I'm thinking what he means for you is that you will be loving and generous, supportive and tender, and you may be capable of high spiritual achievement. Now this person here, and the gay and lesbian communities can please make the necessary adjustments, but this is a man who loves the opposite sex, and the opposite sex loves him, if you know what I mean. He can be very charming, but he's not very deep. He's someone, I think, who is ruled by the emotions and is not very practical. And I have to say, will really try and flatter you rather than try and pick up their share of the expenses. He's often intensely insecure, I think, needing reassurance. And at worst, he's unfaithful or fickle, shallow, highly emotional and unreliable. But nonetheless, I do think that this is a period here where I'm getting a lot of Pisces here again, and Jupiter rules Pisces in classical astrology, and so we have a strong complementarity is what I'm getting up here, and, and it talks of an inner contentment and great happiness, which is going to radiate outward from you to enrich those around you. Now, you may sometimes be uncertain of yourself and feel that you can't get what you want in love and relationships, you may have periods of self-doubt, in which event you should seek reassurance from others. I mean, he needs constant reassurance, but it's a positive sign for you to get reassurance and to get boast boosted by other people around you. And I think that this is also a period where you may well find that you are having a 
respite from what has been otherwise quite a busy period. Now, well, let's have a look at these in context of this tower, shall we? Here we go. Where are we? The tower. I'm going to look at this letter here first, and you can see it there. This is the letter Pei, which is the 17th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Now, literally, the letter means mouth and refers to the power of speech. I actually know speech to be a spiritual power which can cause good or evil depending on how it is used. In a certain way, what you think is how you are, and what you say has the power to become. Violent words lead to violent actions. The quality of speech is considered to be the quality of life's essence and creative existence, and this symbol here is telling you to view your words as precious as gold and not to spill them haphazardly. Because this power is really a double-edged swords. I'm reminded there's a book in the Old Testament or Hebrew Bible called the Book of Proverbs. And that, in that book, I'm pretty sure it's chapter 18, verse 21, it says, Life and death are in the hands of the tongue. Because of this, this pay represents the requirement to govern your own nature. Routine speech, speech to manipulate all the distortions of speech, must give way to viewing speech as a miracle, as gold too precious to be spilled. Then speech can be used for its true purpose, to speak your destiny and to activate spirit through the thoughts and the speech. Now, if we have a, let me have a quicker look, closer look at this again. Now, here's one of those Viking ruins. This is Alyis, and it's about protection, a shield. So you are being protected this month. You'll have the protective urge to shelter yourself or perhaps others. There's a sort of a defense and a warding off of evil is going on. There's a guardian protecting you. It's also about connection with God, awakening a higher life. Now, it can be used to channel energies appropriately. So follow your instincts, keep hold of success, or maintain a position that you have won or earned. Now, in the image of the tower itself, we, I think this is really to do with technology, where technology has a very arrogant application in the natural world, and you can see it's on fire here. However, the sunrise and the blue sky suggest great optimism. Now, it's attributed here to Mars, which I agree with, because this is Mars, the warrior planet here, in full attack mode to destroy the tower. The tower, I think, is really talking about the limitations of your ego. That part of your consciousness which is trapped in your body, you know, the, the, the structures of identity that you have built up over your lifetime, but since this is only a really a tiny part of who you are, then what this is saying is that you need to break down those artificial structures because you understand, don't you, that you are an eternal soul which happens to be incarnated, enfleshed, and um, you are much more than the sum of your experiences your education, your financial situation, your looks, you are perfect. But I think that this could well be a time of some turmoil or destruction, and I mean destruction in a positive sense, 
as you seek to understand how you could have been so mistaken about a situation or a person which you now have got to come to terms with. Now, emotions like anger, grief and depression, sleeping problems can affect you as your perhaps your sense of security has been lost or badly shaken. And you may feel as if your comfortable world will never be the same again, but it will. This could well be as a result of relationship breakup, loss of career, death or, or loved ones or financial or health problems. But you understand these things are all just parts of the game of life. And if you were to say to yourself, I have the power now to dream whatever I want to dream each night. And I'm going to do this for the next 78 years. Every night I'm going to dream the perfect dream that I want. And you can have riches and power and dancing girls or lovers or whatever you'd like to have. But you know what? That's actually going to get pretty boring after a while. And then you'll say to yourself, do you know, this night I actually want to have a surprise. I don't want to dream what I think is perfect. I want a surprise. And a surprise can be a heartbreak or a relationship breakup or a disappointment. These are all the things that go to make up the menagerie of life. The menagerie of life which is here for you to be lived and experienced every day because the day is going to come when there is no more time left. And when you look back on your life, you're not going to worry about that heartbreak or that thing. The important message here is that with the destruction of the old comes the new and you can eventually look at life in a more meaningful way which makes you wiser. Have these thoughts in mind. Who I think I am is a belief to be undone. I have the ability to heal and restore myself at all times. Are you ready to view yourself and life with new eyes? Observe yourself in daily life. Situations may seem to repeat themselves, but you will not continue to repeat old, limited or restrictive patterns and behavior. And say this to yourself, I am not inside my body. My body is inside me. Here we have this girl here. She is Isis. Well, how she placed, yes, yeah, she looks like the Egyptian goddess Isis, who was married to Osiris, the god of the underworld, who would take people through and into resurrection, life after death. She has here a cobra above her third eye, something of an abstract crown, the crescent moon and the sun. She was the mother of Horus, Horus is considered by many to be a sort of a Christ-like figure and have a number of similarities to the Christ figure. But then, well, I won't say anything more about that. The, the issue here is, is that we're looking at a time, I think, for you where you will be able to bring about the materialization of an idea. Pisces is coming up again for me during this period. So is Capricorn and Aquarius. Now, my comments about court cards before remaining the same. This is a young woman who is stern and revengeful, firm and aggressive, but very skilled in the ways of the world. And so I see that this is something that you will be skilled in the ways of the world. Now, she's the earthy part of air. Now, earth and air weaken each other. So we should expect to see some conflict in her nature. But the implication of earth in air is that she deals with situations involving the mind in a tangible way. That is, she can manifest her thoughts and make them a reality. Now, I think that's what's going to be happening to you. Now, it could also relate to someone that you know. And in that case, the feeling that I'm getting here is that that other person, in some respects, may attract troubles and be an unhappy 
person when it comes to practical and material matters. All the fine qualities of air in this suit of swords are suffocated, and such a person can appear as a child of misfortune. But this princess, she can throw everything overboard and literally blow everything sky high to the astonishment and amazement and disapproval very often of people around her. But ultimately it turns out that she has done the right thing and she gains her rewards. She is the princess of the rushing winds, the lotus of the palace of the air. I think what it also means for you this time is that you will be very clever in practical matters, especially where there's any arguments or controversy ruling. Now, be careful because she has quite a destructive way of analyzing things and then applying the outcome of that analysis. And she can be very aggressive and vengeful. But I think that you will be quite forceful and outgoing in your manner and you'll be able to get ideas grounded in a, in a tangible way. Now, just be aware, um, because I'm getting the feeling here that, that this woman here is sort of fighting battles internally and externally. And if that happens to you, then just detach yourself from the emotional feeling of it, but go into the mind and see it as being a sort of a, a movie that you're watching of yourself going through these, these um, scenes which cause internal and external battles. I think that this is a time when you'll be following your own bent rather than serving another, and in due course, you will turn out to have chosen right, and ultimately you will gain your reward. Now this could be following the heart, following a lifestyle, maybe starting up a new business, but because it's in the suit of sword, you understand that any new business is going to take some time to get off the ground. I think that you should say to yourself, what old altars or customs are present in my surrounding and in my life? And do I have the courage myself to destroy how they negatively affect me? And look inside to make sure that your rebellion is rooted in love. And say to yourself, my rebellion is positive, constructive, and creative. I like this girl. She's got a lot, uh, she's got a lot to offer. It's one of these I Ching things again. Where are we? Put that into focus. Looking first at the image, I think that this is really like a temple in the background. Yeah, you're getting the feeling of a temple that's there with its, um, with its window. Do you see that? There's that window that's there. And I think that that shows the physical world opening to something else. Now, you might make out an elephant here. Well, that stone elephant symbolizes the wisdom and knowledge of animals, which we so often overlook, don't we? Now, the other interesting thing about the image here is we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This eighth stone is presented as a sort of a bubble, which to me carries on with that rune that we saw, which was talking about divine protection, spiritual protection being granted to you during this month, because I see this as being something that is floating down to to help you during this period as well. Let's have a look at this I Ching. Now the I Ching has given us a feminine, feminine, masculine, masculine, feminine, feminine. Look, I think that this is referring to attention to detail, you know? It's attention to detail. Now, I think that this is a time when ambitious undertakings are not in order, but attention to small matters brings decent progress. Uh, such is the case for you, even if your resources are really kind of 
small, but when you, through modesty and perseverance, will eventually rise to accomplish great things. Now, an early key to success is to avoid sort of unrealistic ambitions and grandiose goals. The power of the small is served by the slow and steady advancement, and success comes through an honest acceptance of its own limitations without reservations. A modesty stemming from the recognition of limitations is a fine quality, but it can be seen as a weakness if it's not accompanied by conscientiousness and dignity. It's very important, therefore, to understand the demands of your situation and not to, express, to expect great success in huge things right now. now. You should be wise and recognize and accept the nature of the time that you are in and know your role, attend to details and act with humility because you can achieve success even when you don't seem to have much at your disposal. You know, I'm not, I'm not surprised actually that this card comes up in this position here. This is, for me, looking at it, it is the, it is the sun ruling the first decan of Virgo. 23rd of August to the 2nd of September, I think that is which is actually really good because in ordinary astrology, the, the sun rules Virgo and, uh, sorry, in ordinary astrology, Mercury rules Virgo and Virgo is exalted in Mercury. Now what's good is that with this number eight here, I have a mystical association with the planet of Mercury as well. So we have a lot of Mercury in here and a reinforcement of the ordinary astrology surrounding Virgo. So it's very, very favorable from an astrological point of view. So the sun in the first decan of Virgo, the sun here is energizing Virgo's hard work and attention to detail. Do you know also that there is a strength in doing nothing at all? Sow the seeds and sit back and wait for the harvest. I think that this is also a time when you are probably wise to be a little bit cautious and take calculated risks. Be careful with your money. I think there could be some learning and upskilling with you at the time. Um, take some physical caution. Um, and have attention to detail. I think that this energy is also about not over extending yourself nor under extending yourself, but being in the sweet spot. Being in the sweet spot where you can see everything that's around you. I think there's a real flowering of internal ex and external richness here carefulness, prudence. I suppose that's the word I'm really searching for. It's prudence. Be prudent in, in the, how you approach things at the moment. I think that you need the time and patience to develop something. Don't rush it as it's a long-term thing. And that's what the I Ching was saying to us as well. That's what I'm getting up here. Be prepared to bide your time and let it come to fruition. This here with this card and with this symbol on it is really encouraging you to keep doing what you are doing as it will eventually lead to success. Now, of course, it's going to require a lot of dedication, focus and patience. But as time passes, you get closer to your goal. Now, it may not be apparent to you, but events are unfolding around you that are going to lead you to your destination. And I also think that you may need to be managing the different areas of your life and not overextending yourself. And at the moment, I think, just have this thought in mind, and that is that I relax and trust life. Life is good. 
That's the way it is for you this month. Well, there you go, the month of July 2020, and it looks as if there's going to be great things in store for you. And that's great to hear because you deserve good things to happen to you. You certainly do. Look, you were fantastic during that reading, as you always are. And really, there's really only one thing left for me to say, and it is this, that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. Until then, it's bye for now.